the games we love are progressively getting worse. Companies are being more outrageous with their monetization practices. Players can no longer enjoy a game without being reminded that companies are after our wallets. The art form that is gaming is under attack. Compromises are being made to players' experiences for the sake of greed. The video game industry is a business at the end of the day. They aren't your friends trying to win over your heart. They will prioritize profits. The problem is when this becomes too intrusive for the player's experience. People are expecting quality from a game they spent money and time on. Game companies now, more than ever, are attracting more money and giving less. They have so many methods at their disposal of doing so. Video game exclusivity is an artificial border that gamers have to deal with. Console manufacturers make games only available to play on their specific console. The only purpose in doing this is to raise console sales. So now a player has to shell out money for a console they don't want, borrow someone else's console, or let the game go altogether. This only hurts the players and the game's potential audience base. The Nintendo Switch is a prime example why console exclusivity shouldn't exist. The hardware has been showing its age for a while. Games would run smoother and have better graphics on modern gaming computers. This reluctance to move from a greedy business model is infuriating because the game's potential is not being properly realized. Pre-order exclusives are marketing tricks to get people the fear of missing out, offering in-game bonuses that a player doesn't even know how to value because they've never played the game. This is really meant to have people on the fence about the product to go ahead and buy now because the deal is quote unquote too good to miss. This also has a side effect of locking content away from players who never had the opportunity to pre-order. Even before people can enjoy a game, it's all too apparent money drives every decision these greedy corporations make. Different game editions are used to sell a game for more than the industry norm or in-game benefits. A common benefit is being able to play the game sooner than those who buy the standard edition. This is just so wrong. Companies know they have a popular game people are willing to play. Instead of releasing it properly, they take advantage of the initial hype to squeeze extra money from their fan base. Timed in-game sales are another use of the fear of missing out, artificially raising scarcity to further psychologically manipulate players. This method is effectively used for the popular game Fortnite. Kids are easy targets for these corporations. They are more impulsive and easier to be tricked. The value of money is lost on them. DLC is all too common nowadays. The kind consumer friendly approach is so that after a game's release, the developers can keep working on extra content that adds to the base game. The problem is that games nowadays really blur the line between the base game and new additional content that warrants extra money spent. Games end up feeling more hollow, with DLC being more necessary to enjoy games. It feels especially bad when there's day one DLC. It comes off as a cheap way to get money from players. The season pass is common for live service games. It makes sense that companies be compensated for continual development of a multiplayer game. The subscription model is no longer popular, so money needs to be made elsewhere. A season pass usually rewards bonus currency and skins that are unlocked from playing the game during a period of time. Play more and get more rewards. It seems like a win-win for the player and game companies. In practice, not quite so. Season passes often have exclusive rewards. When you buy the season pass, oftentimes you are required to play in a fair amount of games to unlock the best rewards. The amount of time needed is arbitrarily decided by the game. The time requirement is not made clear or obviously transparent, so a player could have spent the money and not the time required to achieve their goal, essentially suckered out of the rewards they were promised. The free-to-play players aren't happy about the season pass either. They get less rewards even though they play the same or more as paid users. Cash spent is the only thing separating them from others. The lack of a season pass results in a game that doesn't properly reward players for their time spent. Loot boxes are surprise mechanics in a video game. Instead of a player buying what they want directly, they have to spend money for a chance to get what they want. This plays heavily into psychological manipulation. Even after spending hundreds, it's entirely possible you won't get the desired result. Early access is a trend that is quite popular. You pay for a game that isn't finished to support a game during its development cycle and give feedback. In theory, this sounds nice. It just leads to a lot of questionable scenarios. It's a system that can be easily taken advantage of. If a game gets plenty of sales and early access, they aren't nearly as incentivized to properly finish the game. It takes a lot of work to polish a video game. Why spend so much effort when people are enjoying what is already available? Instead of making the best game possible, the temptation is there to simply have one that works. Game companies are increasing prices for modern games. 
This is such an insult. These companies are making so much more money from a game than ever by using the previous monetization method. They use as many methods as possible. The initial sale of a game is not where the most profit comes in. If consumers were directly benefiting from better business practices, then a higher price tag would be understandable. Big gaming companies are allowed to have such flaws because it's become normalized to the average gamer. People's thresholds for what is acceptable in a game is always being tested and moved up. Kids today are growing up with DLC, season passes, and microtransactions in their favorite games. Their perspective on acceptable monetization methods are being more skewed. Now imagine 10 years from now, what underhanded tactics are going to be used then? Video game companies are already being scrutinized for their practices by lawmakers. Gamers will claim protests on the internet, but they don't pan out so well. Who's going to ignore a title they were interested in just to make a point? When a new game comes out, it's all over social media, with a growing temptation of joining. People are willing to forgive a lot if a game is fun. No one's complaining on the forums when they are too busy playing the game. When the game is unfun, everything falls apart. The internet will tear that game apart and vote with their wallet. If it's one thing gamers are good at, it's voicing their opinions online. The outrage becomes too big to ignore at a certain point. Companies are forced to respond. Game companies are reminded every so often to not push the greed so far. Corner cutting a game's development enough will cause serious financial and PR problems. Gamers have the potential for real change. It has been shown before. We just need to control it instead of being so reactive. Voting with your wallet is the most impactful thing to do. Maybe that's too optimistic. I do believe that good gaming practices will prevail. If not directly from protests, then a slow, gradual change towards good, fairly monetized games. The more outrageous the monetization becomes, the more players are driven to look elsewhere. Indie games provide a great alternative. Indie games are a wild card because they aren't so well known in the gaming community. A player is taking a chance on a game that it is good, with limited information provided. More indie games are coming out now more than ever. For an indie game to be successful, it really needs to stand out from the crowd. Those games rely heavily on positive player experiences to encourage others to try the game. Positive word of mouth is what gives fire for a game to grow an audience. This is why people look towards indie studios under a better light than big companies. Indie games really have to build trust with their audience by producing games for the players, not at their expense. Games shouldn't cost an arm and a leg. An extraordinary budget isn't necessary to provide a fun time. An inflated budget raises the company's desire to milk every cent when the problem lies elsewhere. Bigger doesn't always equal better. Graphics, visuals, sounds, and music you can have all the best ingredients from a technical standpoint, but it needs to be crafted properly. Otherwise, you miss the point entirely of what makes a great game. A game is an art form, like any other source of media. It's driven by creativity and curiosity. Video games are still fairly new in the grand scheme of things. There's a lot to explore. Sadly, the people up top focus too heavily on the wrong things. One of the biggest games in the world shows this the most. Minecraft sold as a complete experience with free updates periodically. It completely took the world by storm. The community for this game is strongly present years later. There's a certain simplistic creative charm to it big studios don't do. If Minecraft was made by a big studio today, the game would be gutted into separate DLC packs and selling a season pass where there shouldn't be one. The point of Minecraft is that it's a sandbox where you're limited by your imagination. That's what makes modded versions of the game so fun. Having purposely imposed restrictions ruins the magic of it all. The best moments gamers have don't involve cash shops, but real accomplishments and engaging stories. You aren't able to be transported to a virtual world when you constantly have to enter in a credit card. No one's ever excited that they have the digital deluxe edition of the latest copy and paste game. Companies are making everything so formulaic when they shouldn't be. Games aren't supposed to be predictable, repetitive cash cows. Video games are an art form that should be treated as such. The state of things is sad. So much wasted potential in an unexplored medium. The best games are the ones that touch people's hearts, where an emotional connection is met. Success follows that. Chasing monetization first is a mistake. Sacrificing a game for short-term profits isn't the approach. In an already expensive hobby, players cannot afford to give more. At a certain point, there's nothing else to give. Companies plaster their logos on their games and people eventually take notice. Consumers will naturally gravitate towards the path of least resistance, allowing good games to shine under the spotlight.